Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the difference between what happens when you bounce a track to a fixed point bit depth like 24 bit versus what happens when you bounce to a floating point bit depth like 32 bit float. Before we get started, be sure to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads and get a free copy of my EQ cheat sheet, my compression cheat sheet, and my vocal recording guide. So we've got a session here and I'll just play you a little bit of it and I think the first thing that you'll notice is that the master fader is clipping. So we're sending too much signal to the master fader and it's overloading. Now the first thing I'll say is that, you know, part of your job when you're mixing a track is to be intentional about your levels and to make sure that you have proper gain staging and that you don't clip the master fader. But let's say that for some reason, at some point in your song, your master fader does clip and you haven't noticed it. I'm going to show you what then happens when you bounce that track to either a fixed point bit depth like 24 or a floating point bit depth like 32 bit float. So obviously the amount of clipping that's going on in this track is, is very noticeable and you wouldn't want to bounce your track if this was going on. You would want to resolve that before you bounce. But this allows me to demonstrate what will happen if you bounce a track and at some point there was some clipping in your track. So first and foremost, let's bounce this as 24 bit. I did a video recently on which settings to choose in this bounce window, depending on what it is that you're bouncing your tracks for. Uh, and so I'll leave a link to that on screen. Okay, now let's bounce the exact same thing as a 32 bit floating point file. Okay, let's delete the three tracks that we've got here. And let's import the two tracks that we've just bounced. So we have the 24-bit file that we just bounced and the 32-bit floating point file that we just bounced. Now obviously when we bounced the tracks, the master fader was clipping. So let's have a quick listen and a quick look at what's going on now. We'll listen to the 24-bit file first. So that's still clipping and you can hear some digital distortion there. Now let's listen to the 32-bit floating point file. Exactly the same, still clipping, we can hear digital distortion. So let's have a look at what would happen if we turned each of these tracks down to try and bring the level of the signal down to where it wasn't clipping anymore. I've turned that down using clip gain in Pro Tools. You could also do that using a trim plugin. I did a video on how to do that recently and I'll leave a link on screen. Or you could just turn the faders down themselves, but I like to work with the fader up near zero rather than towards the lower end of the fader. And so I like to turn the signal down before it reaches the fader. So we've turned these tracks down a little bit. First and foremost, let's listen to the 24-bit file. We can still hear digital distortion there. So what that means is that that distortion is essentially baked into the file. And if you look at the meter, we can see the fact that anything that has tried to go above a certain point has been clipped off. It's missing from the file. You see the way that that doesn't get any higher than that point. That's the point that it's reached and anything that's tried to go above that point is now lost. Let's have a listen to the 32-bit floating point file. With this file, we can't hear the digital distortion. And if you look at the meters, you'll also notice that this 32-bit floating point file is peaking higher than the 24-bit fixed point file. So in the 24-bit floating point file, anything that was going above zero when we bounced the track was lost, it was cut off. Whereas in the 32-bit floating point file, everything that was going above zero and everything that was clipping on the master fader has actually been retained in the file and all we needed to do was turn the file back down, and then we have a track that we can still use because we can turn it down to a point where it's not going above zero, we haven't lost any of that information, we haven't lost any of that audio, and we didn't bake any of that digital clipping into the file. So should you bounce to 32-bit float? Well, it kind of depends. 
if you're being very intentional about the levels in your mix, then theoretically this shouldn't be necessary because there shouldn't be any clipping in your track. But 32-bit float is there as an option if you want that sort of fail-safe, uh, you want that peace of mind that if at any moment in your session your master fader does clip, then when you import that file into a DAW, you know that if you've used 32-bit float, if there is any clipping, it's not going to be baked in. You can turn the track back down in that session and there's no problem. So I hope that gives you an insight into the difference between bouncing a track as a 32-bit floating point file versus bouncing a track as a fixed point file, like a 24-bit fixed point file. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads to get that free cue cheat sheet, that free compression cheat sheet, and that free vocal recording guide. And I'll see you next time.